William Jennings Bryan, is a Democratic and populist leader and a magnetic orator who ran unsuccessfully three times for the U.S. presidency, 1896, 1900, and 1908. His enemies regarded him as an ambitious demagogue, but his supporters viewed him as a champion of liberal causes. He was influential in the eventual adoption of such reforms as popular election of senators, income tax, creation of the Department of Labor, prohibition, and women's suffrage. Throughout his career, his Midwestern roots clearly identified him with agrarian interests, in opposition to those of the urban East. This is History Uncovered, bringing you historical events and their truth. Today we will be discovering the life of William Bryan, the man who failed three times in running for presidency. Born on 1860 to Silas Lillard Bryan and Maria Elizabeth, Jennings, Bryan. Silas Bryan had been born in 1822 and had established a legal practice in Salem in 1851. He married Maria, a former student of his at McKendry College, in 1852, of Scots, Irish and English ancestry. Silas Bryan was an avid Jacksonian Democrat. He won election as a state circuit judge and in 1866 moved his family to a 520-acre, 210.4 hectares, farm north of Salem. He lived in a 10-room house that was the envy of Marion County. Silas served in various local positions and sought election to Congress in 1872, but was narrowly defeated by the Republican candidate. An admirer of Andrew Jackson and Stephen A. Douglas, Silas passed on his Democratic affiliation to his son, William, who would remain a lifelong Democrat. William's cousin, William Sherman Jennings, was also a prominent Democrat. William was the fourth child of Silas and Mariah, but all three of his older siblings died during infancy. He also had five younger siblings, four of whom lived to adulthood. William was homeschooled by his mother until the age of 10. Demonstrating a precocious talent for oratory, he gave public speeches as early as the age of four. Silas was a Baptist and Mariah was a Methodist, but William's parents allowed him to choose his own church. At age 14, he had a conversion experience at a revival. He said that it was the most important day of his life. At 15, he was sent to attend Whipple Academy, a private school in Jacksonville, Illinois. After graduating from Whipple Academy, Bryan entered Illinois College, which was also located in Jacksonville. During his time at Illinois College, Bryan served as chaplain of the Sigma Pi Literary Society. He also continued to hone his public speaking skills, taking part in numerous debates and oratorical contests. Bryan graduated from Illinois College in 1881 at the top of his class. In 1879, while still in college, Bryan met Mary Elizabeth Baird, the daughter of an owner of a nearby general store, and began courting her. Bryan and Mary Elizabeth married on October 1, 1884. Mary Elizabeth would emerge as an important part of Bryan's career by managing his correspondence and helping him prepare speeches and articles. Bryan then studied law in Chicago at Union Law College, now Northwestern University School of Law. While attending law school, Bryan worked for the attorney Lyman Trumbull, a former senator and friend of Silas Bryan who would serve as an important political ally to the younger Bryan until his death in 1896. Bryan graduated from law school in 1883 with a Bachelor of Laws and returned to Jacksonville to take a position with a local law firm. Frustrated by the lack of political and economic opportunities in Jacksonville, Bryan and his wife moved west to Lincoln in 1887, the capital of the fast-growing state of Nebraska. Defeated for the U.S. Senate in 1894, he spent the next two years as editor of the Omaha World Herald and as a popular public lecturer. The climax of Bryan's career was undoubtedly the 1896 presidential campaign. At the Democratic Convention in Chicago, his famous Cross of Gold speech, July 8, won him the nomination at the age of 36. If they dare to come out in the open field and defend the gold standard as a good thing, we shall fight him to the uttermost having behind us the producing masses of the nation and the world. Having behind us the commercial interests and the laboring interests and all the toiling masses, we shall answer their demands for a gold standard by saying to them, you shall not press down upon the brow of labor this crown of thorns. You shall not crucify mankind upon a cross of gold. His solution for the depressed economy after the Panic of 1893 was an easy money policy based on the unlimited coinage of silver at a ratio to gold of 16 to 1. On that platform he also received the nominations of the populist and national silver parties. In the ensuing campaign, he traveled more than 18,000 miles, 29,000 kilometers, through 27 states and attracted a large and enthusiastic following, but the well-financed Republican machine won 271 electoral votes for William McKinley to Bryan's 176. 
Bryan lost to McKinley again in 1900 and to William Howard Taft in 1908. In recognition of his role in securing the Democratic nomination for Woodrow Wilson in 1912, Bryan was appointed Secretary of State the following year. Despite his diplomatic inexperience, he made a distinctive contribution to world law by espousing arbitration to prevent war. Bryan convinced 31 nations to agree in principle to his proposal of new treaties that would provide a cooling-off period of one year during which a question in dispute could be studied by an international commission. In the meantime, World War I broke out. An avowed pacifist, Bryan finally resigned over Wilson's second note to Germany, June 8, 1915, protesting the sinking of the Lusitania. Nonetheless, he urged loyal support of the war when it was finally declared. The concluding episode of his life was the famous Scopes trial in July 1925. A firm believer in a literal interpretation of the Bible, Bryan went to Dayton, Tennessee, to assist in the prosecution of a schoolteacher accused of teaching Darwinism, or the theory of the evolutionary origin of man, rather than the doctrine of divine creation. With Clarence Darrow as chief defense counsel, the trial attracted worldwide attention as a dramatic duel between fundamentalism and modernism. John T. Scopes was found guilty and fined, later overruled, but the excesses and passions of the court battle took their toll. Six days after the trial, Brian died in his sleep. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed learning about the life of William Bryan and his unique political trajectories. Don't forget to subscribe to receive updates about our latest videos. See you soon on another video.